Well, hi there, and welcome along to another edition of What's the Word in association with Ladbrokes. I'm Tom Malone, joined this week by Mark. How are you, Mark Boylan? You well? All good. All good. Yeah? Recovering from last week's predictions, I was, was going to say, yeah, geez, I, I got uh, an able two down half very round. Got two of the three naps up in Ireland, so I may stick to home and forget about them okay, gossing no, lads okay. across the water. Nice, you still managed to get a positive after time in there too. That, that's good work. Uh, you'll survive. Uh, what about you, Declan? Good to see you back. Yeah, good fun. How's it going? Good week. Ooh. Yeah, so so. So okay, okay. Yeah, I'll keep it on the down though. And Brian's back as well. Yeah. You all right? Yeah. Spent last weekend at La Hinch of all places. Oh yeah. Oh, First nice. trip to the golf. It was supposed to be, apparently it was really good. Would highly recommend it. John Ram is the man. John Ram is the man. Yeah. You're gonna need to go golf tipping as well, are you? Well I actually didn't have a penny on, but I just think he's just a classy act, so I just thought it was uh, it was definitely more exciting than I expected to uh, to going down. Yeah, golf is not the greatest balls, spectator but, sport. Oh, but it's brilliant. Yeah. It yeah. looked like it was rocking anyway. It was. Now, the town was mad. It was like uh, the flag here on the air <laughs> and down there. Yeah. It, all weekend, but it was very good, yeah. Cool. Are we going to give an explainer for our British viewers what flag kill the hair in it? Uh, <laughs> We'll let them just uh, figure <laughs> it's out. It's good. Uh, what is it? How would you describe it? It's a, a cultural experience of it's Irish like dancing, singing folk songs, and Kaylee, basically dancing over. and drinking. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> but like dressed up as culture. Yeah. Uh, right. Let's move on to uh, the racing action. Then it's been quite a bit of debate over the quality of three-year-olds. So it's probably too early in the season. Well, maybe that was just before you all rode off too darn hot, particularly you, Mark. Well, anyway. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what. I, I'm this too darn hot chat with me and you. If if too darn hot. Beats an older horse in a group one this season. The next, you can arrive in that Friday for what's the word, and there'll be lunch sitting on the table for you. He, he won't beat an older horse in a group one this year. He, it was such a soft group one. Like I was surprised that Aidan didn't run 10 sovereigns in, in the pre jam Pratt. First year back to seven furlongs. The horse, to me, he didn't get that final furlong at Newmarket. He d didn't look to enjoy the six, I thought, in the Commonwealth Cup. It's the softest group one I've seen in a long time. I couldn't make sense. Aidan doesn't generally target it, but... I'd stay firm on my opinion with two darn hot, but and you could be having a dinner. It's very hot too. But we'll see how we go. <laughs> okay, okay. We might just look through some of the three-year-olds, and you can just give it a hot or not. So two darn hot for you, Mark. Stone cold, Declan. A uh, hot. He could turn out to be a superb sprinter. I mean, mm. it's very early, so yeah. I'd be saying hot. Okay, cool. Well, we're piling in on Mark there. King of comedy. Top uh, of the time form ratings on the back of his Ascot run. I read that, yeah. I, I think that's, that's a bit of a, a, an over-exaggeration, oh. but I think he has loads of potential to do it. I'd say he's not entirely the full finished article just yet, but when he does, he'll be a proper horse. Uh, there's a lot of debate in sections. I don't really want to bring it this way, but like, Visnari was beaten yesterday after being the biggest sort of sectional Easter's horse going. Mm. And then there was quite a lot of justification on racing TV about it. What were your sort of thoughts on, on the sectional timing debate? Uh, well, it would have been handy for the Irish Derby trying to decipher just when to, what happened. Uh, I'd be all for it. The more uh, these people are saying that uh, you don't want to confuse people by, like, look at, I mean, young people these days, they know how to use smartphones and all this kind of I mean, it just. <laughs> Brian, I mean, you're not even 30. <laughs> stop talking like that. I'm just saying the more information, the better. Like, yeah. I mean, it's in soccer, it's in most sports. I think, uh, I think that's actually what attracts people is having more information and more data at hand. So I think uh, I'd be all for it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, US sports, you Huge. can't move for the data yeah. you can get the analysis. Are you pro it, Mark? Oh, definitely. I, listen. Do you uh, use I, it? I, I don't, don't use it because I don't follow uh, the English level to the degree where I would be uh, ch checking times. Now, I would say there's good databases out there where you can get, can get that data, but I take Simon Rhodes' column very seriously. I enjoy reading that. You take points out of it. I wouldn't make a decision based on sectional timing alone, but I'd factor it into the entire thing. And like Brian said, the Irish Derby is essential. Now, the other thing is, with Ireland in particular, when it is introduced here, please God, sooner rather than later, there are different tracks and different configurations. The rail movements would, could potentially be an issue where we're unsure of the exact distances over some races, but it will be a great resource to have in time, and it can only be positive. Like, you're, you're looking there, as you say, American sports, American football, how many markets are there made on yards per game? How many, you know, it's such a stats-based thing in America, it makes no sense why we can't have it here. And there's been leading writers have been speaking to in the last week who mentioned that to me as well, that the, there may well be a need for a two here. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we talk to be brown. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's got to be a valuable resource. Uh, the next horse on my list is actually in the July Cup. So let's just move on to the July Cup and give us the bet for that, Declan. Yeah, we start off with Advertise, uh, 3 to 1, Dream and Dreams, 4 is 92 Cape Byron, 8 to 1 Brando, 10 to 1, 10 Sovereigns, and Fairyland, 14s are bigger than the rest. Well, Advertise, would he be a hot or not for you, Mark? Just not for this moment, because I'm not 
definitely well, sold. What do you need? <laughs> What's a dual <laughs> group one winner? <laughs> We're only in July. Got, look, I, I'm, I, I'm just been. I don't mean to be too negative, but okay, I mean, okay. the horse he got forever in dreams up his backside in the Commonwealth Cup. That's a horse who got stuffed at Cork in a listed race, and then went a listed one at Haydock. And for me, it's just inconclusive. Jash on the same day was very disappointing as well. He ran no race, and I didn't think set Ten Sovereigns did himself justice either. It just leaves me a little bit of a question mark over the form. Now, he is entitled to every respect in this race, and he's a very high-quality horse, high-quality two-year-old. But in this now, I think I might take a chance in the older brigade. I like yeah. Brando. Now, he's not, he's not out-and-out Group 1 stalwart, but he runs well in this race every year. He's bumped into Harry Angel a couple of years ago. He was third. He had a U.S. Navy flag last year. I don't think there's a U.S. Navy flag or a, or a, a Harry Angel here this year. Um, you know, they tried to ride him differently in York. He didn't like it. And then he showed a lot of quality now, ridden as he should be, on ground that's probably softer than I did. He's versatile, but I think he handles quick ground here. Good to firm the two years he's been, he's been placed in this race. Just think it could be there, a bit of value. Sort of pricey, Declan, 7 or 8 to 1? Yeah, around uh, 8 to 1 at the moment. 8 to 1, Brando. What about you, Declan? Um, I can see where you come from, Brando. I think Lamado probably falls into a similar yeah. category of, of the older horses that are going well in the course. I can't steer too far from Fairyland. I'm relatively confident Fairyland back over the six furlongs is going to at least make the frame. Um, and at the prices, I think it's about 10 to 1 at the moment. Looks like you could have an each way bet on that. The five furlongs are just too sharp uh, at Ascot. And I actually don't think she run all that poorly over a bit further, but... Six furlongs clearly the best. I think she'll start to kick on from the from the juvenile form and looks the value of the race to me. I think. Yeah, a bit of an ask for a filly to attempt to do it in an all age group one. But uh, your thoughts, Brian? Who are you with here? Yeah, certainly. If you're of the opinion that this isn't uh, an up to scratch renewal, you could obviously go with the Brando or the um, the Lamato. I mean, when I watched when I was watching Royal Ascot, the one horse I said I want to be with next time was Dream of Dreams. Mm -hmm. Now, now that the dust has settled, I'm just wondering. Like Blue Point is better over five furlongs. It was the second race of the week. For all that Dream of Dreams looked unlucky and looked the horse to take going forward, especially given he's trained by Sir Michael Stout, I just don't know. I don't know if I believe that form. And he's a five-year-old. I think there's only two five-year-olds have won it since 2007. I'm going to go with ten sovereigns. I just think it, it reminds me of, um, of US Navy flag. You know, they tried him in the, over the mile in the Guineas. Yeah. They've come back. Maybe it just took him a little time to acclimatise the soft ground, wouldn't have helped at Ascot. He didn't seem happy at all at Ascot, did he? Yeah, yeah, he didn't. No, they might have to just acclimatise these sprinters yeah. when they're coming back to six furlongs. And like he looked a real deal at two, beating over six furlongs in, in three starts. I mean, I think you could see a different horse in the July Cup. I don't think it's a fantastic race. Yeah, I think he just... Um, he, just comes into that uh, category for me. Well, so uh, that's one of the things about Ten Sovers, isn't it? Uh, like, I mean, he has, at two, all the chatter was that mm. this horse will not get a mile at three, wasn't it? Yeah. And now we're like, you, you can't, what price is he now? Uh, around about 10 to one as well. 10 to one? Is that something that attempts to mark? Ah, yeah, I can definitely see the case. Classy horse, um, you know, but like that now, just I, as Brian said, I can see him winning a, a sprint later in the year with a sort of trip. Just might take a couple of runs to get a feel for it again. Just, you're, you're, the way you train a horse to get a mile in the guineas has to be very different to you know winding a horse up and getting them. I'd say you could see a different ten sovereigns this weekend. Um, the price is definitely wouldn't be disagreeing. Do you not be a little bit concerned, even though silly to say at a time recording because Ryan Moore's just had a winner, but would you not be a bit concerned about Ryan Moore no. and, and the fact that this not. one's in a bit of poor form as well? No, no. no. I, I, really, I genuinely, I'm not been, I'm not been smart. I, I really don't think that. I we were kind of talking about this off air. Like, there's probably, and you can shake me down on this, but like. Is there a chance that because Bally Doyle, maybe Bar Japan, don't have an absolute outstanding horse, there might be kind of, some of them are a bit of a similar level, so there's actually not much between them. When you say, oh, the jockey bookings, with the hierarchy of jockeys, there's probably not that much difference in the actual horses. I mean, hindsight is a great thing, isn't it? I mean, and, and racing is cyclical. Like, everyone goes through purple patches, and obviously Frankie is riding this the crest of a wave at the moment, but Ryan Moore, I don't think any jockey riding at the moment has a better international record than him. Fair enough, things aren't going well at the moment. But, um, yeah, I, I, I think he's... I definitely want him in my side rather than he, against him. He, he also way. went through a bit of a drought for Group 1s in his own career. I think it might have been the longest gap between Group 1s was this season. That might affect the fellow's confidence as well, but, but geez, he's I, definitely no negative at all in, in a July no. Cup sense, no. you know. It's, uh, right, quick along, the, quick along the boards then. July Cup, who wins? Or who are you backing? Or who wins? Oh, I, I'm going with... Brando. Uh, with Brando, no, no question. All in Brando? Fairyland. Fairyland. Ten sovereigns. Ten sovereigns. All right, let's move on to the Bunbury Cup at 3.35. Cracking classic uh, Saturday handicap. Yeah. What, what did Lambert's make this second? Very, very open race. Six to one about Kinron. 13 to two Spanish City. Eight to one Ambassadorial. Tens for Solar Gold and Vale of Kent. And 12s are bigger the rest. 
Good stuff. Fancy anything here, Brian? I do. This tends to go to a horse, like a hardy handicapper who's had like, <laughs> they've had um, a horse who's run three or more times in a season, has won this last yeah. 10 times in a row. Okay, that's fair enough. But Ambassadorial, this horse was thought of as a guinea's horse at one stage. And uh, yeah, it didn't quite work out. He was sold from Michael Harfords for relatively small money. But the one thing that I'm worried about him, for all his potential, and maybe they have finally got him right, he's obviously had a horse with problems, but all his form has been on the all weather. You will know well yeah. about this horse because <laughs> you love him. I was a massive like fan of him of a Friday, but yeah. yeah. But he's still only five. I mean, he's had two long layoffs in his career in excess of maybe 300 days or whatever, but like Jane ha Chapel Hangham, I think the, uh, the word was out that this horse was back, and I have a, a, a little inkling because I had a, a share in a horse, I'll, I'll make this very quick, and we offloaded him to England, and the current owner of the horse basically gave us updates of the horse, blah, 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 went well, and he won at Chelmsford under David Egan. So the horse, that is the spirit, is the name of the horse, went to run at Chelmsford then a week later, maybe two weeks later, and they tried to get David Egan aboard. And David Egan goes, no, 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 I'm booked for Ambassadoria, who was 33 to 1 at, at yeah. the time, and he duly bolted up. So they've obviously at got... At 8, I think, isn't it? He Sorry? Won, I think he won at 8 to 1. Yeah, well. he yeah, won at 8, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, not carrying not, any not, of my money, of course. <laughs> but, I mean, they've obviously got Ambassadoria back on track. Now, David Egan doesn't write, I think he's, uh, he's elsewhere, so his father, John, takes over. <laughs> but I just, it, it's, uh, it's very interesting, this Ambassadoria. I'll, I'll be keeping an eye on him. Yeah, intriguing, yeah. He's a good runner. I suppose the thing about... Mike, uh, Michael Hanford takes his horse so gently in the early yeah, career, yeah. Actually, he's a good yard to buy from. Exactly. Uh, yeah. What about what you, Declan? Do you like one here? I found this one a bit difficult, actually. I thought Solar Gold looked got progressive. Good, it's the point. Yeah. <laughs> Six to one the field, <laughs> Saturday handicap. I, f I found Solar Gold a bit progressive. I, f I, f I generally just found it hard to, to land them one. Ultimately, I just went for one of the big price, uh, Rip Orf. Fifth in the Victoria Cup this year, having won one of the previous year, and was also fifth in the Lincoln at Doncaster, and had a bit of a mare in Epsom yeah. last time, so he kind of put a line through that. But I think it's about 18s or 20s. Yeah. Solid, solid handicap yeah. the, the Bell Rip Off. I think they actually backed him in Epsom as well. All right, go on, Mark, who are you with? I actually, to be honest, there's an awful lot of box ticked for one of the third three to one here that I like. Uh, okay. Zap, Richard Fahey. Yeah. Horse won at Leopardstown, love quick ground then. I think it's essential to him. He won the Constellation race for this last year. He's four pounds lower now than when he won at Leopardstown. He's drawn high, and I looked at this race, there's a lot of Mark Johnson front runners and front running horses up towards him, left and right. So he's really well positioned for a dropout horse to come late. He, this will suit him very well. Richard Fahey has won the race three times. He often runs a couple of horses, and I think he's had two and three runners in the past. This fella is very bottom weight, and he has no other runner. So I just wonder, was it, you know, he surely have other horses to fit the mould. Was he hoping to get him in here after winning the Constellation race last year? Just think there's lows in his favour. Nice Mark. And he showed ability a couple of starts ago. You know, his form is a little bit hot and cold this year. But the ground had soft in the description, uh, good to soft, and that wouldn't be him at all. He wants to hear is who's rattling. So I just think Zap thirty three to one. He shouldn't. He, he great rep. He won the, the course previously. Yeah. He should be bang there. Good stuff. On to the summer mile at Ascot at four o'clock. How do you bet on that, Declan? Uh, we have got Zaki top of them at two to one. Beat the bank seven to two. Matterhorn eleven to two. Accidental agent at sixes and tens are bigger than the rest. I mean, this lot probably just know each other, don't they? Like, they, yeah. I mean, they, <laughs> they, they're like this is like you know something you see at Dundalk Walk on a Friday night. All the horses just turn up, know each other. <laughs> anyway, who comes out on top? <laughs> I think Mark is more, uh, from speaking to him off camera, he's uh, stronger on this than me and he'll make a much better case than me, but I thought Zaki, kind of Zaki. Like, by process of elimination, really, yeah. it, truth be told. Yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah. go on, go on, Mark. He, he, he said that this is a far stronger <laughs> argument than it is. I wasn't, like, I wasn't <laughs> bullish, bullish now, but he, he made, made sense, you know, drawing one on the round course, you know, getting three pounds from Beat the Bank. He's a har Beat the Bank is a horse I find difficult to get a total handle on. Yeah. You know, he, he can be very good. Um, but I just think now, typical stouty improver, uh, Matt or Horn should go along and make it a bit of a test. Mm. It was mentioned after the last day that this horse could go a mile and a quarter, so it could, should be a strongly run mile here, should come home strong, just makes a bit of sense, but wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be running down the road down to the local laboratory shop the second. He's <laughs> potentially in a race where they're all open books. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Uh, right, let's move on to the rest of the action on Saturday. A couple of selections. Declan, you like a couple on Saturday? Yeah, York's 205. I thought him blazing for John Gosden. Uh, hopeless, absolutely hopeless in the Diamond Jubilee, so maybe want to drop wait for a little bit help. of price. Yeah, big drop in class. And I thought maybe the blinkers, because it went right immediately at the stalls. But basically, 
three year old form looked decent, reappearance looked decent. I, I think good chance of getting back on track here. And uh, another notable one, two, well, two at Limerick just to fly for Gordon Elliott. Yendo, uh, Jamie Codd's one ride, I think, of the day over there. First run over two miles, six there, should have a reasonable chance. And he's got from Eden, who uh, Davy Russell is on board. Uh, back to two miles, or had been running over two mile four or two mile, uh, goes over two mile two this time, and generally been there, thereabouts in the frame since join, joining Gordon Elliott, so should have a good chance. Good stuff, Brian. You anything else on Saturday? Yeah, I have a few at Navin. Um, okay. This Leo de Fury now. Are, just, you, are you going to do a Dave Jennings here and take out the, the two or three? <laughs> no, <it's fine. laughs> okay. two or three, okay. and I won't be. Uh, I All won't right, be, go on. Yeah, so this is Leo de Fury. I'm sure you saw his yeah. winning debut at the Curragh. Now, there's only three runners in this race. It's a conditions race at Navin to 125. So I don't know what price he'd be. He'd probably be favourite. He'd probably be odds on. But if he wasn't in around 10 to 11, maybe even money, he could be... Um, That'd be an almighty bet. Go on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah go on. What yeah, else would yeah. <laughs> Gopsy's daughter has been a, a horse that has been on my ra radar. But, I mean, it's going to it's gonna click. It's going to yeah. click. Uh, it's definitely, definitely going to land someday. It's well handicapped on the basis of last year's form, and obviously Dennis Hogan's string are in form at the moment. So in that three of five, Gopsy's daughter under Killian Leonard, and at Navin in the four fifty, Grace to Race, which is a little less under the radar as the other two. So Grace to Grace got a little bit worked up beforehand at Bellystown, flew home from I think it was draw sixteen or something. Uh, interesting, I was doing the spotlight for the race. Lee Roach was was um, actually jocked up on Grace to Grace, and he was dropped up, jocked up on the Gavin Cromwell horse who's going to be, uh, the name actually escapes me, he's going to be at the head of the betting as well. So uh, Roach actually rides this grace to grace, he's got the cheek pieces on for the first time and I'd say that'll help sharpen it up. Good stuff, let's move on to the uh, Sunday action then. Um, at, was go, just go with areas in the Brownstone Stakes, Group 3 contest that could be, as you mentioned, tricky enough to get a handle on here. But uh, Mark, I'll start with you in the Brownstone race. Aidan O'Brien has never won. Maze, yeah, we were talking about that off air, yeah, it's, it's quite something, and he, he often fires a few bullets at it to try and make amends, but no, the one I like here is perfection, uh, David O'Mara, uh, Philly, she won a listed race for John Gosling, I thought she was a real eye catcher in the walking and came home after a real troubled passage, now albeit this is a different sort of a test, but uh, she was entered for a group three at York uh, on Friday, but she's been taken out of that due to ground, but seems to have found a nice opportunity. She to may well be running today, she's entered no, for she, today. No, she's not oh, running due to ground. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I thought so, I wasn't uh, sure. Yeah, no, and that's going to... And it could you'd, be convenient. You know, yeah, I, you'd be getting about four to one thereabouts on something like perfection. So it was yeah. originally one I thought might well be scratched, so I'd kind of left yeah, it behind, no. but I think it's a good chance. All right. No, I like that feeling. Yeah, what about really you, Brian? Do you fancy one here? I'm going to give a shout to one that has a lot to find on ratings, and I'm probably going to look a bit mad, but I'm going to just put forward Black Magic Woman for Jack Davison. Oh, that's what I was trying to look over your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she didn't lay down yeah. the race. Now, she does have a lot to find on ratings, yeah. and the, the English Brigade coming over are certainly, uh, you'd obviously fear them. You'd, you'd, you'd rather if they stayed away. But I think Jack Davison, this filly, if, the, if we do have the eight runners, I think she's going to be a good each way bet. She won over the course and distance last day. She looks like she's progressing, so maybe she can make the jump. Uh, and I'm ho hopeful that she does because Jack Davison, he's um, trains locally to, to Philly. Yeah, House. he lives, lives just down yeah. the road. Yeah. Uh, a he's really nice well. filly yeah. in Fresno who will yeah. hope to get hopefully a nice race into some stage over the course of the season. But uh, yeah, I, yeah, I like the chance of Black Magic Woman as well, actually. Uh, anywhere else? For, well, we have obviously the uh, Grand Prix de Prix. We're probably going to be able to summarise that race in one word, are we? Mm. Grand Prix de Prix? Begins with J and ends with N. Japan. Japan. <laughs> Turning Japanese. <laughs> there you go. You, yeah, you, you love, you love it. All really uh, so. right, let's uh, move on to the rest of the Sunday action. I know you've got a couple of selections. You're mad to impart on a smart. Ah, oh, jeez, I don't know. Two at Sligo. I thought that morning Sky had win the four-year-old maiden hurdle. Dennis Hogan horse just running consistently. You know, previously with a class in the flat. Just thought it was a winnable opportunity for it. And Amor Veradero won last weekend as well. Uh, just starts off in the mark of 100 in the mirrors. Now his handicap hurdle at Sligo. That's a 250. And I just thought that she'd take all the beating as well. Good stuff. Anything for you on Sunday, Dennis? Uh, uh, Dennis or <laughs> Dennis Hogan, on my mind. Uh, I'll take a good look. Put Dennis on the graphic at the bottom there. Uh, yeah, another one of Fairy House, actually, just the 455. Laura Bullion um, for uh, Colin Keane and uh, Noel Mead. Back to mile four. Looks really, really winnable contest for him. Yeah, good stuff. Anything else for you on Sunday? You're going to have to be very patient for this one. Man Gun Wee in the 530 Fairy House, the last race at Fairy House on mm -hmm. Sunday. One at Sligo, I've been following this horse for about a year, but one at Sligo, uh, and it's up only a couple of pounds, so... <laughs> so yeah. I don't know why that happened. Yeah. Anyway, go on. Yeah. Manganui for Jared Fahey and Shane Foley in the 5.30 at Class Fairs. trainer. Uh, right, yep. let's move on to our best bets of the weekend then. And, uh, well, we know Brendan Duke here, so it's our traditional Trixie uh, for you. You go with that, Mark? <laughs> Tell you what, we'll, uh, we'll go Amor Verdero, 250 Sligo is the best bet. I say Zap in the Bunbury Cup, 33 to 1 will be the next best after that. 
And sure, you know, Japan Opian, so we go Morning Sky in the 145 in Sligo. I think you're going to be a bit of a thief and stick in Japan for your travel. I'm not, I'm not, no. thankfully. I don't think I'd get away with that on this, uh, go on this for ratio. No, emblazoned for me in the 205 at York, which uh, going the opposite of the lads, beat the bank in the four o'clock at Ascot. Really, really fancy, beat the bank's chances actually. Yeah. And uh, from Eden in the 505 Limerick. Good stuff. Ten sovereigns in the July Cup. In the Bunbury Cup, we're going to go at Ambassadorial and then over at Navin, uh, Grace to Grace in the 450. Good stuff. Well, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll be back again next week with more What's the Word.